not just for hire and officer. We also have to maintain, we have to purchase vehicles. Yes. We have to maintain vehicles. We have to put fuel in those vehicles. Yes. We have to buy weapons, put bullets within those weapons, yes. all the equipment, the training, the training, all dispatchers, that. receptions. There's a lot that goes into it. So while I think it's a great endeavor for a future Merino Valley, I agree with you for Merino Valley 2018. I don't think that's a, a relatively smart idea. The idea of, a, of an audit to open up the book, because we are supposed to be transparency within the city, I think that's probably a smart idea. Um, I think that if we open up and see, you know, hopefully we can figure out something to increase the public safety, because that is, for me, the one thing that keeps people here is safety. If you don't feel safe within your own neighborhood, walking across the street, you know, to, to Walgreens or, you know, going to pick up your tiny food, you, you don't want to feel like I have to keep watching my back every 15 minutes, just, you know, just going anywhere or my car gets broken into the sudden. That seems to be something I see on next door. I don't know if you're on next door yeah, or, yeah, or yeah. not. But yeah. I see a lot of, you know, hey, somebody was, you know, thankfully a lot of people have these green doorbells. Um, so this is, uh, just, just real quick, mm -hmm. I want to share that there's an interesting fact that I learned um, recently about the police to, to resident ratio. So, um, Reno Valley, what our, our population is like 200 and something residents. Yeah, it's like 200,000. 200, um, so, for at, there's only point, it's like point seven, not even a whole police officer per 1,000 residents. Right. That's scary. It is scary. I've, I've, I've talked to people and they've talked about, I've, okay, I have my garage broken into mm -hmm. and I called the police and she says, well, we can't come out. We can take your statement over the phone. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, you really can't come. They don't have, we don't have enough officers in our city. Mm -hmm. They just, and it's very scary to hear people say, well, my house is broken into, but they can't come, or it took them four hours to get out of here. Mm -hmm. That says that, you know, our, we're not supporting our police officers as we should. Mm -hmm. We're not giving them the tools and the equipment that they need to do their job effectively. Right. And that means we're doing a disservice to the people who live here, who pay taxes here. And that's a shame. But I'm glad that you're bit, you're very honest and realistic when it comes to uh, the police department. Because I know a lot of people, will, it can happen, but if we, but raising taxes, one, is not going to be something these residents are going to want to do when we are already, you know, we have the gas tax and all these other things. tax. That's why I haven't bought a house here yet. Ah. Um, I, I wanted to ask you, because you were part of the tra uh, the traffic mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, when it traffic is in getting bad here, mm -hmm. it really is. Mm -hmm. So when we, you know, say for instance the amphitheater, mm -hmm. and I'm not downing the project, but I'm wondering. If when you were on the, do you take that into account when all these new projects come up? Do you guys, as a traffic, do you sit down and talk about the traffic issues and try to mitigate those issues, or is it kind of just swinging by the, and you know, swinging by mm -hmm. the seat of your pants and hoping it's not, you know, it's not mm -hmm. going to get any worse? Mm -hmm. Because I'm, I'm noticing that you know people are talking about the roads and the roads are slowly but surely getting done, but with the traffic issues. And now with this amphitheater project and that's an increasing 400 plus cars, how is that going to help the infrastructure in the valley? So unfortunately, I um, my term ended on the traffic commission, so I wasn't able to even hear about the amphitheater. A lot of us did. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't on. I wasn't on at the time. Um, but based upon my history um, from being on the traffic commission, um, I would like to first give credit to the city staff. They do an amazing job. When they're not finding contracts that they're not supposed to well, be finding, and those guys know who they are. Specifically the traffic folks yeah. is what I'm talking about. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I want to give them credit because, you know, whenever these projects come up, they go out and they do surveys. When you see them on the side of the road, they have their little cameras, you know, they have a little line, they're measuring the cars. And so I would like to give the, the, specifically that traffic uh, section, the benefit of doubt, and, and, and I'm going to assume that if they were provided with enough 
information before that they were able to do some type of survey on the impact of the traffic, um, I mean, of the amphitheater. So traditionally what happens is like, you know, um, when, 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 you're, when, when there are roads getting improved in, 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 um, in our city, they've done a survey on like which roads have the highest amount of like accidents, mm -hmm. which ones are experiencing the most like, um, cause there's certain times, right? You'll see in the morning, between like six and eight, in the evening, between three and six, they go out, they have a, they have a knowledge. If you go to city hall, that first room to the right, mm -hmm. all those cameras, there's, you know, there's people behind there that are manipulating the stoplights to ensure that, okay, this is turn green, go, go, go a little longer. So, um, I, I believe that uh, the city staff probably can factor that in, but we have to remember they only have, they're limited on resources. Right. But they're limited on the funding and the, the money that they have. They're, they're limited on the staff that they have. And so if we're going to um, approve projects like that, as a city council, we need to ensure that the, there's funding mm -hmm. to back up that pro that project to ensure that it's going to be um, safely built, mm -hmm. that the infrastructure is going to be able to support it, that we have enough um, around it. And I don't think that that's what happens. I, I, I can tell you, time and time again, and I feel like this happens even at the state level, where there are programs or initiatives that are that are um, agreed upon, but there's no funding that back, to back it. Right. Right. I think that happens here. Sure. That happens here. And so, I don't know. I wasn't able to approve, to see that amphitheater, but hopefully just, hopefully it works out. And it just, it just makes me think, because, and I, I only wonder because you were on that commission, you know, when it comes to traffic and then all these increasing projects, and I see all these different warehouses going up. Are they trying to mitigate the whole traffic issue? Are we just going to, you know, are we just saying, well, just build it, we'll figure it out? Because Alessandro, Frederick, Day Street, I mean, it's, it's getting, it's going to get worse. And I know it's going to get worse before it gets better because of all the construction that has to go, you know, when they start the um, amphitheater and all that other fun stuff. So, so, so I want to say something real quick. So mm -hmm. about a year and a half ago, um, it was brought before the traffic commission to approve truck routes within the city of Greenville Valley. <laughs> we didn't have approved truck routes. And I said, how? We have all these warehouses we built, all of the that, you know, we, we this industry's already here. How 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 we never had approved truck routes? So whenever we have community members that are complaining that there's a truck parked behind them or there's trucks like driving on surface streets, and it's very important for us to have truck routes because those trucks they tear up our, our roads yes. because our roads can only have a certain amount of weight, weight on it, right? And when you have trucks that are driving on them that aren't approved, those potholes, and then who has to who has to pay for it? We do. do. Why is the developer paying for it? Why isn't the trucking company paying for it? So it's important for all the trucks to travel on the same road so we know, okay, they're all going down heat company to make sure that we're done. How do you enforce that? Um, so what we, did, what we did also in the traffic commission um, was we um, suggested and, and the city did approve it to have a commercial uh, trucking law enforcement. So we mm -hmm. do have two, two trucks yeah, now. Yeah, you hear about that. that that's, that's all they do is they go around and they uh, ticket yeah, I think I saw a couple of them uh, sitting over here by the burger joint over here, not doing anything. So we're paying them. No, I'm just joking. Uh, but trust me, yeah, I will yeah. be, I will be looking Listen, and hanging I, out. So. I, I'm so supportive of of the police, and I'm sure I'm that they supportive. were just taking a break. Yeah, I know. No, I'm very supportive oh. because I, I know for a fact that every time I call, even after hours, they will come out and ticket that truck yeah. because I had a neighbor right here in this neighborhood who had a commercial truck. I told him what the rule was. He didn't give a damn. But I said, you know what? It's out of my hands now. I tried to be a good neighbor. I got a ticket. So then yeah. they came out. That's a, that's a, actually, thank you, Donovan, for saying that. I have a question. I don't know if you have this problem up in District 2. But because we're down here in Pope Oak Country. Uh, <laughs> I pay over $2,000 <laughs> in property tax that went to your district. It went to build your district. Um, and left my district. The roads in my district. Com your roads compared to my district are pristine. I told you I had to buy thirteen hundred. Hey, I I understand, but for thirty almost thirty years, property tax was taken from the district one, the Edgemont area, for the benefit of everybody else, and I was going to sue the city, and that's why they came out here and was kissing my ass to get some of these uh, construction projects done mm -hmm. because I had I had the goods on. Mm -hmm. Simple as that. So. Okay. Go ahead. Back to our thing. 
beautiful this Nobody cares about it. It's all the beautiful landscaping <laughs> and it's all green and lush. But it's beautiful. HOA up there too, so they're paying HOA fees yeah, I came to for that Sunny Mead Ranch specifically. Mm -hmm. I, I've done that before, I'm going to do it again. I, what I'm wondering is when you get upon, when you sit upon the diet and it comes to um, the beautification of the city, it seems like no matter if you go up to District 2, it's beautiful and green. Yes, you have your HOA, but you know, it's beautifully landscaped. The roads are great. District 1 looks like <coughs> Ethiopia. <laughs> I do that. Just right. Do that. Go ahead. Um, District 3 as well. I'm working on it. You know, it, it looks, you know, there's, it's bad. Mm -hmm. And then District 4, depending on what street you hit or miss, it, it seems like you can see where the money goes. You know, yeah, we can see. Mm. Sorry to be sour, I just have to. Well, I mean, I would be sour too. I mean, honestly, I mean, I live in District 3. And it's well, I happen to have a uh, representative that works for the city, she doesn't work for the district. So, you know, there you go. Well, she didn't work for the city, but you know what I mean? She works for the developer, whatever. And so, I mean, I think it's great that we're having whatever built on Bay Street, you know, the hotel, motel, hall. Yeah, you gotta have a, you, you gotta have a, a infrastructure in place for the um, lot lizards to go and ply their trade because that's the only point of having all of that down there. Because what is in Moreno Valley that's gonna attract anybody to come to the city? We have, we're full of warehouses. You guys see where I'm going with that? We were talking the, about the downtown part earlier. Right, yeah, right. we were talking No, about I heard you guys, yeah, and you guys okay. are doing great. And by the way, we're, we're real quick, let me interrupt. Um, I was just now blocked on Facebook. So for those guys that I shared to the, the page that want to continue to hear uh, Carla Thornton, please help help Are me share. Facebook? Yeah, I'm in Facebook jail officially right now. As soon as we started this interview, I went to Facebook jail because I know that the EDO is uh, reporting me. But uh, share this to the different pages, and this is the part two of the uh, thing. And I've been blocked officially until whatever days it is, but you guys continue to get the word out, and just please help us share this and so everybody can hear Dr. Thornton uh, in her interview. Continue. Um, I'm last very night they were talking about now they're working, the city's going to work with Caltrans to start cleaning up, you know, the exit from this, you know, along Reno Valley. But my concern is every, the street, because once you pass City Hall, once you cross Frederick on Alessandro, there's, that's the end of the beautiful landscaping, because, you know, City Hall is beautifully landscaped, and it's, and it has green grass and beautiful trees, but once you cross, you know, you cross over and you pass leaves and, you know, everything else, it's, it's you know, broken walls, no sidewalks. Or walls. ask yourself, once you cross the street, you're in the shoe over there where all the drug trafficking and the slumlords are. How does that, how does that happen? It's beautiful over the city hall, but you go right across the street. That's where all your drug paraphernalia and things are going. And when LaDonna Jensen was on the uh, dais, that's what we tried to clean up and we were doing that. The city attorney was suing the property owners to clean up their property. I mean, people were build, building structures there for their children to play on. That was illegal, you know? So we cleaned that up. But did Baca do anything since then? No, it reverted right back to the way it was. Being that, you know, I know we had that same issue and a lot of places were kind of abandoned once we had the changeover, you know, in leadership. I'm, I'm hoping that, you know, when it comes to the beautification of not just District 2, and, you know, you taking care, because District 2 will always be your priority because that's who you represent. As far as, you know, working with the, the rest of the council persons to make sure the rest just, because right now I know District 1 and District 3 feel completely unrepresented. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, when it comes down to, you know, city, current city issues, we have really no dog in the fight anymore. So I feel like, you know, while everyone else is, you know, having wonderful, you know, things happen in their district, one in three get absolutely nothing. So how can we, how can we ensure that this doesn't happen again or continue to happen because District 1 and District 3 are just terrible. But so district, so also but District 2, because Council Member Guy, but ha, he can't put things on the agenda, right? But he's right. being so kind of right. blocked off though too. Mm -hmm. But I think that what's going to be important, so first, let me go back. So when, when, um, when it comes to investment in some of these roads, um, there has been studies conducted on every road, uh, street, to figure out which, which ones need to be, and they're prioritized, mm -hmm. all right? Uh, to determine which ones need immediate attention. What I would 
um, suggest community members do is start attending the traffic commission meetings and speak during the public comment meetings because when you guys, whenever, every single time a constituent came to a traffic commission meeting and spoke on an issue, 100% of the time it got resolved mm. and addressed. 100% of the time. Okay. And so um, I know that it should, you know, you should just be able to go to the city council meeting and talk about during public comments, but the people that actually boots on the ground are doing the job traffic. are sitting at the traffic commission. The city staff, they're sitting at the traffic commission meeting. Mm -hmm. And so I really would um, advise for city members who are feeling like you're feeling, that they're held the uh, first Wednesday of every month, I believe it's from five to seven. Don't hold me. I should know. I was on it for three years. So I guess I didn't kind of break down right now. Once it's off the Yeah. <laughs> um, and talk about that and ask them to uh, provide you with the paperwork and the documentation. And they'll give you a list. It's public information of how these streets are wrapped and set concerning which ones are going to be improved on and which ones are not. Um, and that's why I keep on trying to, you know, array for the city staff because they're the ones that are actually doing the work, right? Mm -hmm. You know, they're not the bureaucrats, uh, well, they are bureaucrats, but they're mm -hmm. not the, the elected officials. They're the ones that's like getting paid to do it. Um, and so I would, I would encourage you to go to a traffic commission meeting and, and ask that question. And I'm, I put money in it. They're going to give you a, a answer that you're going to be like, all right, okay. Um, so, but on the, but on the city, city council side, I think it's going to be important is. For us to ensure that we're collaborating and holding each other accountable and like having this type of good working relationship. I mean, we've all had jobs where we didn't get along with our coworkers mm -hmm. and it made it harder for you, right? Mm -hmm. So I don't see how the city council can sit up there and not really get along. Like we need to all be on the same page. Well they are, three of them are. But all of us have to be right. But right? It, it all you need is a majority. And that's my that's my fear. What what would happen if it ends up being we can't have more of the same. We can't have more of that split. That's right. In order for the entire city to move forward, we all have to have a shared vision and the same plan. Who's going to do the work to try to get everybody on board? Right, absolutely. I, I got an important question for you here. Okay. Too. Okay, we're all veterans here sitting at this table. Now, the biggest employer in this region, in, in this area, is March Air Reserve Base. You've got people on, on the city council that have never served in the military, uh, uh, well, Gaiba and, uh, and Marquez have. Yeah. But they've been X'd out. So the three people making decisions for the city have no clue and don't care about the military, even though they harp that. Now, the encroachment that is happening on that base, yeah. as you know, I, I was with 4th Air Force, I was with the 452nd, so I am invested in that base. There, we have a big military community here that still use that commissary, that mm -hmm. still use that uh, EX, some of us still use the gym or whatever else that's left, ITT and all that stuff like that. We've got a lot of people here. If we keep encroaching on that base, that base and the next round of base closures, as you know, mm -hmm. as you know, as military people, Norton, when Norton went down, San Bernardino was done. Yeah. Now we have a situation here where we're uh, really, uh, my question basically is, you're an Air Force veteran, this is the biggest employer that we have in this city. Mm -hmm. What is your uh, idea of how you're going to uh, work with March Air Reserve Base and Fourth Air Force and the Commanding General? Yeah, so I think it's very important for, um, so Senator Richard Ross, um, you know, yes. who's former, our, Fourth Air Force former mm -hmm. retired general, mm -hmm. um, um, uh, Cindy Ross, who is the president of the Riverside Chamber of Commerce. Mm -hmm. Rivers, the city of Riverside does a really great job at advocating on this very issue right here. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, They are constantly working with community partners to ensure that they are staying in the loop on what plans are getting approved to ensure that there's not encroachment on the base. What I think is going to be important is that we're, because it's really Paris, right? Mm -hmm. That we're staying in communication with Paris, we're collaborating with them, that we're being, uh, so between Paris, Riverside, and Marino Valley, we need to have an internal process between the three of us mm -hmm. where we're, we're, we're not allowing um, certain the, structures and development mm -hmm. um, uh, to, to happen that encroaches on uh, the our flight path the flight of the pattern, right? Like that um, you know, it, it's always, this is a hot button issue, mm -hmm. but it it is. Is, and I'm surprised we don't talk about it more. And we no, about because it. Most, really? of, most of the people here do not, are not in the military. 1% of the population don't yeah. serve anymore. Well, I mean, a lot of people don't really. I, I, I remember how beautiful that base was. You guys remember how beautiful I was stationed there when I was that base yeah. was. And I remember I came back after it, after it went to reserve, and I was like, that whole non-operational side mm -hmm. of the base, that was the, the saddest thing to watch. It it's literally in a state of decay. Mm -hmm. 
how and, and it's sad because that base was gorgeous. gorgeous. Mm -hmm. So General General Muncy, who was the previous yes. wing commander, did an amazing job at um, ensuring that when it, if, if Brack came back back around, that March would be able to justify the diversity yes. of the units that were on. Right, that's he why brought you in the uh, Homeland Security. Yeah. Right, yeah. He, he brought armed, the Air National Guard from Victorville. He yes. brought the Predators yeah. down. Armed Forces Network. There's at least mm -hmm. like I think it's like thirty or forty ten tenants. units. Right. Let me go off the military. Mm -hmm. we, know. Yes. we know. I've never seen so many tenant units right. on we know. one, and I've we been know. in some big yes. cases. Well, it's like you know, Dark Base Carson and some of these bases. You got to consolidate them and get everything. Yes. And, and so that was all done on purpose. That was a strategic model to ensure that that we stay open okay um and so i think that what would what i would do i know what i would do is continue those relationships i already know uh senator ross personally um if congressman zicano gets in and you know voted back in mm -hmm. again um you know he's on the, the veterans at the, at well the, at i'm gonna the, have to i used to work oh, with the okay. I'm, have to, I'm not saying i disagree with you but what i'm saying is he only deals with veterans issues when it's election time so uh, so <laughs> ensuring so, yeah. that's that my opinion that between I the like you matrix out of that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you, 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 uh, yeah, you did good like you matrix out of that. It, 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 between ensuring that uh, the, the relationships stay open yeah, between yeah. the legislators, yeah, it's, it's right? Very important. The Chamber yeah. of Commerce, Marina Valley mm -hmm. Chamber of Commerce, Paris Chamber of mm -hmm. Commerce, and Riverside Chamber of Commerce, and that we're staying in tune and collaborating with those. I already know the, the key people in some of those industries, so it would just be a natural progression. And your past associations yeah. from being over there. So, yeah. I, you know, and like I said, no, like That's said, a really good question. Yeah, like I said, nobody's talking about that. Okay. People say, well, this is the biggest employer. No, the biggest employer is that base. It's the base. Yeah. So, and I would even be ashamed if anything ever happened right. to it. We, we're going to be done. I wish we could better utilize yeah. You know the things on that base, mm -hmm. not just militarily, but also civilian. You know, right. civilian wise, yeah. because it's, that's such a great space. That's mm -hmm. not. And remember, it's still in caretaker status. So you've got 29 pounds. You've got Camp Pendleton. There is no air mobility way for these Marines to get to the fight in a fast amount of time. But we know C5s are getting old. So once they break or they're building, we have to super in model whatever. But the point is. This is the only place in Southern California where these guys can get out of here yeah. in yeah. time. And if that thing yeah. closes, we're done. And the thing that I've always like to say is that people don't know this. March Air Reserve Base is the largest reserve base in the mm -hmm. entire nation. United States. That's okay, right. they have over 10,000 reservists that drill mm -hmm. every month. Right. Okay, they have two different drill weeks because right. they have so many people. People come from Hawaii, yeah. Yeah. from the East yeah. Coast, just to drill here mm -hmm. in March. And so um, it, it, the... the um, the economic development and, 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 and that, that comes out of that, that impacts our local community is, is big, but also the mission. The yeah. mission that comes out of March every Reserve mm -hmm. Base is direct, it directly impacts our national security. Yeah. So it's going to be very important that we continue to invest and stay in communication. And have good relations. And good, have amazing relationships. It's, it's essential to our... To right, and what a lot of people, civilians out there don't know, that is a very historic base because anybody that was anybody in the Air Force commanded there. Yeah. Half Arnold, our only five-star Air Force General. Yeah. Uh, Stewie Spat. Mm -hmm. uh, Curtis LeMay, who I had met before I went to Desert Storm before he died. Uh, we had Air Force Village West. I yeah. mean, this was a big yeah. strategic air yeah. command base, and it is a very historic base, and I think it's very important that we don't forget. I mean, we're following the exact same path as Norton. Mm. And, and it took Norton. Norton's digging out of it. If you uh, drive by there, yeah, San there's, there's one wall that's and you right. can see this. It's like N-O- and then it's the saddest thing, but that's the only yeah. part of that bill that's still standing. Right, right. It's and, sad. I, you know, and my thing is, we know San Bernardino had a lot of problems, and it's taken them a long time. They're digging out of it. So look at how long yeah. it's taken. I mean, San Bernardino was going under when you were still in high school. Yeah. And I don't want that to happen here. And people, and I know we have a different demographic where people who've never served in the military, but that base pumps in so much money. And Sunny Boulevard, where do you think that money came for for our pink oh, sidewalks? Oh. That basically is pumping $65 million in the local economy alone every year. So we had all this expenditure. That's why if you watch Dr. McBean, she kept saying, take from the general fund, take like this money that's supposed to appear. Now that was in the good old days when the base was active. We don't have that anymore. The base now pumps about $16 million, $18 million. Know. When yeah. I talked to Muncie, that's when it was back, oh, okay. back then okay. uh, in the local economy. So we've taken a significant hit. So you know, I think that's important and a lot of uh, candidates don't know about that and a lot of them can't speak on it because they don't have a background. Oh, right. um, can we talk about your Facebook video that you put up? Sure. Mm, yes. Because I was, Fire! I was scrolling through the timeline. Fire! 
I said, well, wait a minute, what's, the, what's, the, what's going on here? Um, I was kind of shocked that you had to speak on it, but, you know, if you want to yeah, go ahead and have a conversation about it, because I was kind of surprised that you had to go there. But. So I guess for me, what really was uh, what what really drove me about it was this idea of like rumors, right? R lies and rumors being spread. And I know that, and like I said, there's like a natural component to politics, um, but in a lot of ways, I'm very like logical when it comes to work stuff. Like I, I just want to do it. I just want to be a voice for those mm -hmm. who don't have a voice. I just want to represent my area, and I don't want to be distracted by rumors that I know um, are being caused by people who um, have their own agenda that isn't the agenda of the citizens of Reno Valley. And so I had rather make a video than write it in a post because I didn't want anyone to be able to misinterpret my text. Like we hear about word, how words get mis mis misread. No, I want you to have a video <laughs> and you saw me make eye contact That's with the right. lens. And, you, and I did it all in one shot. That yeah. wasn't like yeah. a, a second shot. Right, right. right. I'm going live. Yeah, and, mm -hmm. I, and I thought it was important. I did talk, you know, because on, on the flip side, I want to make sure.